And right now, it's my privilege to introduce to you tonight's special guest, Phil Keggy and Band! Thank you. I mean, I was here at a sound check and you guys were still in your seats. But appreciate the welcome. We're glad to be here with you. We're glad to be here with you tonight as well. And uh, I'm here with some good friends of mine. They're uh, Californians. And, and uh, we're here to share good news with you. Hopefully good music. That's up to you. And, uh, but we've been practicing some. And uh, we want to share the Lord Jesus Christ with you. And the, the fact that he loves us and he's, he's given us life, he's given us a reason to live. And um, uh, I know someone that you can look up to. And that's what this whole evening is about. And you can look up to the Lord Jesus Christ. He saved me 13 years ago and I've been born again ever since then. And I just want to share the talents God's given me with you. And lift him up, exalt the name of the Lord Jesus that he may draw all men unto himself and little girls and little boys and all these sort of things. Okay, uh, I think things work and we're going to do a tune for you called Happy.
just a moment. Oh, okay. Sorry, Mr. Technician. This next song is from an album called Flipside, and it's called Just a Moment Away.
Ronnie. Well, I think we got that out. I know, you know, it's so much louder than it was at the sound check, but, you know, sometimes that's how it goes. You know, you got these electronic uh, amplifiers up here and they just don't, you know, they just want to, they just want to kick a little bit there, you know. Right. This, uh, this next song is a new tune and uh, I wrote it last winter and I'm going to be putting out a little album called Underground Basement Tapes, just music from my little, my basement, you know, four track stuff. And this is one of those tunes. And uh, it's called What a Love. And it's just that sort of, just sort of that way. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Oh, I'm asking Peter what's next. He's got the song list. <laughs> they were putting batter on my face when he was making the song list up. But uh, oh, I'm not that often in front of a camera, so please excuse me. 
for sweating on this side of my face. I've got a lot of things to do up here. I've got I've got strings to keep in tune. I've got weird buttons. This is a this is a new guitar a, a guy in California made for me, and I don't know how to run it. You know, it's but that's the way it is. And uh, but we're having a good time and glad to be with you here. You folks just make us feel so comfortable in your smiles. That's one of the things I love about being here. Hey. See, every time you applaud or do something like that, I can go make my changes and then you won't miss me. No, I'm right back there. Okay. But, uh, um, Oh, I was going to say something, but I forgot about what I was going to say, so it doesn't matter. Oh, you, it's nice to see your faces. That's a real contributing factor. You feel like you're a part of somebody, and really, I feel like I'm a part of you. We're a part of each other here tonight. The Lord is good, and you know, He loves children very, very, very much. How many, how many, is, how many people here are children? Lots of children. Lots of children. Okay. You ever, you ever seen kids have such a good time singing out of tune and they don't care, you know? You know. <laughs> this is a tune called uh, Carefree.
This is a song that I wrote originally for my daughter Alicia uh, as a as a lullaby before she went to bed. And uh she's now three years old, very special. And I've got a few songs for her, but this song is a a song that uh we sang almost every night to her. Now she wants to hear other ones, you know. Now she wants to hear Sheila Walsh. But <laughs> but uh this is a this is called Spend My Life With You. This song talks about uh just it's you know just a child's faith you know toward her or his father. And uh I had a very dear friend in Kansas City where my wife and I have been living for the last um four years. And this brother was named Bruce. He died of cancer at the age of 33. And he asked that this song uh would be uh sung at his funeral and I sang it at his funeral. It's hard to imagine singing a song at all at anyone's funeral, but he knew the Lord. He was born again. He had a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's kind of hard to understand why someone so young and so full of the Lord would be taken home. A lot of people ask those questions. But he had survived with Hodgkin's disease for 14 years, and he was a living miracle for a, a great many years. And uh This brother was just a real example of the Lord Jesus Christ. He wasn't uh the kind of guy that was, you know, acted holier than thou type of of person. But very very right down to earth and really related to people where they were. And he really made me as a brother feel very comfortable that he was an example of the love of Jesus Christ. And um this brother Bruce asked that this song be shared, you know, at his at his celebration to go home and be with Jesus. So when you think about the fact that this song is to a child, a child's expression to his or her father as well as the kind of song that relates homecoming and going home to be with your heavenly father. In the presence of the Lord is where you'll really be satisfied. And that's what we have as Christians. We have a hope that we're going to see Jesus Christ face to face, the Lord and the redeemer of all men and the 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 creator of the universe. and uh we have a really relationship with this Jesus. He's living, he's real. And that's why we sing about him. That's why we have the joy in our hearts. That's why we have the faith to go on. And that's why no matter what comes our way in this life, we can be overcomers and have victory over temptation, over frustration, over fear, over anxiety, over depression. You know, o- over lack or, you know, whatever whatever is hitting you, whatever comes your way, hurt, sorrows, You know Jesus Christ is sufficient in all in all things for your life. And so keep in mind what this song is about then as as I shared those few moments with you there. Sorry, that's not a part of the song. It's just a mistake I just made. <laughs>
Oh. 
to share a couple of, uh, maybe one song, say, say about six minutes worth of uh, acoustic song with you. This is a little story song about how I met the Lord Jesus. It's called My Life. It's your life too in some ways. Sure. Take uh, the, the countryman out of the monitor and just put the, the this, that one in the monitor. Thank you. That's your thank you. Stand. Gone on a week, 
again Fellow musicians The second month of the year It was quite cold And the roads were so icy And my mind wasn't so clear Little did I know That my mama was in a collision And went to be with the Lord I was so empty But soon I discovered That there was hope and more Someone prayed for me Older sister took me to a minister Who told me how I could be free Right now, we want to bring back Phil Keggy and Bam. Top professional. I'm going to do a, a, a couple short acoustic numbers again for you, if you don't mind, because I really love playing the acoustic guitar. That he might touch them Mothers and fathers With sons and daughters Drew nearer Just to behold him Disciples of the master Saw them approaching And promptly began rebuking But Jesus indignant Pointed out their ignorance And spoke with none refuting Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for you see, the kingdom of God belongs, belongs to such. 
such as these. Oh, let the little children come to me. Supporters of abortion are banding together, protesting the right to life is the mother's decision while denying the vision of sight to the unborn babies. The ruler of this world has slaughtered the innocents through the Herods, Hitlers, and Pharaohs, while our generation looks on as a nation of young are slain with the arrows. Let the little children come to me. such as these Oh, let the little children come to me The moving of God's Spirit was often preceded with vengeance displayed by Satan The children fell victim in a sea of affliction and few dove in to save them The Savior of the people carefully protected by parents unafraid came forth to bring freedom to the slaves and to lead them you know that you can read it let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for you see the kingdom of god belongs belongs to such as these oh let the little children come to me
issues like they don't want to lose I've got to speak up Hearts forming minds quenched before awakened, and for so many deliberate crimes, the earth will soon be shaken. Little hands, little feet, tears for him who made you. Forsake you now, yet he'll never forsake you. No. Who will speak up for the little ones, helpless and half abandoned? They've got a right to choose life. To speak of, won't you? I've got to speak of, won't you? Let the little ones live. about all this is that people are standing up for the lives of little ones you know and there's a scripture that says deliver those who are being taken away to death and those who are staggering to the slaughter oh hold them back if you say see we did not know this does he not see who judges your heart who rewards you according to your works who is the keeper of your souls the Lord God sees everything. He sees the things that are done in the open as well, and He sees the things that are done in secret. And uh, I, I, I wear these little, this little pin here. It's uh, little tiny feet. They are two little feet of uh, the exact size of a, a baby in the womb at 10 weeks old. And um, so my wife and I, we have a little girl, Alicia, as I mentioned before. She's very, very special, and she's probably upstairs watching me right now, saying, Hi, Alicia, how are you doing? I love you. The you meters go like that. Okay. Anyway, uh, you know, we, we, we've desired to have children, and right now my wife is, uh, she's pregnant again, and we're expecting next, uh, late February. <laughs> But I, I'm glad that I'm, I'm here today. I'm thankful to God and grateful to God to be alive because, because uh, I came to understand and know the mercy and the grace of Jesus. He came into my life 
and I've been born again and I have a relationship with my Father in heaven and I'm going to have everlasting life with him and with my brothers and my sisters and my family and my mothers and my fathers in the Lord and you know uh, I has not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for you those of you who love him and uh, as far as I'm concerned it takes more faith to disbelieve God than it does to believe God it just comes more natural to us I think as creatures to to what well, we're hungering we're looking for someone to fill our hearts only he our creator our maker knows our design knows what we're made out of he knows the need that we have in ourselves for him and Jesus Christ said I came that you might have life and might have it more abundantly and he's the creator all life from you Lord is a gift and the Lord created every one of you, every one of you, because he wanted to love you and have fellowship with you. And I'm grateful to God to be alive because I'm one of ten children and the ninth one along the way. And I'm glad, you know, my mother and my father decided to go on, okay, are you pregnant again, honey? Okay, well, that's okay. That's the Catholic thing to do. You know? And um, by all means, go right ahead. And so... Well, I'm grateful, and my my younger sister Jerry and I came to the Lord the very same day. And, but I couldn't have come to know Jesus had I not been born, have I not been conceived. And so I am really, uh, the Lord has put in my heart a burden to stand up for the little ones. And uh, we had in 1976 a little boy named Ryan who was born prematurely at uh, at six and a half months, and he only lived two days at six and a half months. And he died. And, you know, we had to have a funeral for that little boy. We had to have a, a little, I don't mean to get into depressing things, but this is life, right? And we had to have a little casket for him. And, and it was a dreary, rainy day, the day of the, the funeral. But we understood that, um, that, uh, that uh, I was reading a sign. I'm, I'm terrible at concentrating on two things at the same time, you know. But, uh, we knew that that child went to be with the Lord in heaven, and uh, he's being raised by the Lord there. But I came to discover something recently. There is a billboard that uh, someone put up in Missouri, the state of Missouri, that says, The womb, in black letters, once the safest place for a child, is now the, the most deadly. Seventeen million babies have been aborted since 1973. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of lives. And uh, so at six and a half months when our child died, we had, we had a funeral for him. And we came to discover our church in Kansas City is right across the street from one of the largest abortion clinics in, in the Midwest. And they abort full-term babies there, babies at nine months. That is what's happening in our country. That's what's been happening in the world. We need to stand up for the rights of the little ones because it affects us all. We are members of one another in this race. And... And God has laid it on our hearts to stand up for righteousness and goodness and truth and life. Jesus Christ is the author and giver of life. Let that just soak and just seep into your heart. Let that as a seed grow. Because that's what Christianity is about. Christianity is not just going to church. It's, it's having a relationship with someone who gave you life. And that's what it's all about. And walk in that life. Give life to others. Bring life to others. That's what it's all about. I want to sing a little short verse here called, it's called, this is, this is to Alicia, this is the other side of it, this is, this is the happy side. When I say I love you, do you know what I mean, Alicia Marguerite, do you know what I mean, when I say I love you, when I say Marguerite, do you know what I mean when I say I love you? I love you means holding your hand when you cross the street, sharing in prayer when you've got a need, wiping your tears when you start to cry, finding the answer when you question why. When I say I love you, do you know what I mean? Alicia Marguerite, do you know what I mean? When I say I love you, I love you means 
bicycle rides on a sunny day Going down slides as we run and play Be right here when you need me, babe Holding you near if you should feel afraid When I say I love you, do you know what I mean? I wish you margarines, do you know what I mean? When I say I love you I love you means showing the way you may know the Lord Proving my love to you more and more Giving my time, listening when you say Just what's on your mind and teach you how to pray Alicia Marguerite, do you know what I mean when I say I love you? When I say I love you, when I say I love you, when I say I love you. I'd like to invite the guys to come back and like to do a couple more numbers for you real quick here, okay? This is called a royal commandment. We're gonna do this song right this time. We're gonna start at where it should. <laughs> These guys would have done great if my string wasn't tuned down to spend my life with you. Let's take it where it should start. Ready?
start a song as long as you end together. I don't know.
compare with what you are Everything else goes Let it all go Let it go thousand years ago for your sins and mine that's the power of God that's the power of a new life is recognizing him recognizing Christ Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world let him into your heart let him into your life You know, at this time, I'd like to uh, make an invitation. And there are, in, in all the churches that you're listening to this concert in tonight, there are pastors who love you. They're there with you tonight. And they're standing with you. And the Lord Jesus Christ especially is standing with you. If you'll take a stand for him, he will be with you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. The Bible says that if we, if, if we die with Him, we'll live with Him. If we suffer, we'll reign with Him. If we deny Him, He will deny us. If we are faithless, He remains faithful, for He cannot deny Himself. He is truth. The Lord Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He who confesses me before men, 
I will confess before my Father and the holy angels. He who denies me, I will deny. If you really know the truth and if you really know the facts, the facts that God created you, God has loved you from the very beginning, and that His Son proved it. The Scripture says that God demonstrates His own love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If God loved us while we were sinners and didn't want to have anything to do with Him, just think when you become a part of His family, the love that He lavishes upon us all. You know, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He loves you with an everlasting love and He's drawing you right now by the Holy Spirit with His loving kindness and His mercy. And if you will, at this time, just bow your heads with me and let's pray and let's talk to God, our Father. And where you are, wherever you are, I don't, it doesn't matter how far north you are, how far south you are, how far east and how far west you are, or where you are in your heart, you may be feeling like you are in the darkest place possible. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And He will remove the darkness from your life. When you allow Him to come into your heart, He is the light of the world. All the darkness leaves. He sets you free. He delivers you from your bondage and, you, and, and the things that bind you. He gives you a new life. He gives you new freedom. He takes the sting of death away. He takes the fear away. And He gives you a hope that is secure. Do you have hope tonight? When you don't have hope, your life and your heart is sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Christ Jesus, the Lord of life. He just extends Himself freely as a gift. How can we turn away such a precious gift? And all eternity hinges upon our receiving the gift of God, His Son, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Thank You, Lord Jesus. God, Father in Heaven, I praise You, Lord, for the opportunity to speak, not just to so many people, Lord, and to sing and to share, but to the individuals that individual that you see right now, Lord, that person who stands alone by himself in his need or her need, Lord. Lord, you say that, Lord, when the sparrows fall from the, from the sky, you take notice of it, Lord. And how much more precious in your eyes are we than sparrows? Oh, Father, touch the heart right now who is hungering for you. Touch the soul that is drifting away from you, Lord, and bring that person back, Lord. At this time, if you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ, where you are, raise your hand and say, God, I want you in my life. Just raise your hand wherever you are. I want Jesus in my life. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Raise your hand to God and He'll see it. And those of you who have raised your hands, I'd like to ask you to stand where you are. Just to take a stand for God. Take a stand for Jesus. And make a decision now that will affect the rest of your life and probably countless others as you touch their lives. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Let him in, and he will come in. He will sup with you, he will fellowship with you, and he will abide with you for eternity. As Spencer here, I'd like to ask Spencer to join me here at this time. And this is a good brother here, and he really loves the Lord. And I just want to ask him if he'll just reiterate and make secure that invitation. I want you to do something right now. It's time that the young people of America make a stand for Jesus Christ. Isn't that right? In it, in it time that the world recognize that these young people are the future of our nation and of this world. It's time. You've been looking for a chance to be a responsible person.
person, you've been looking for a chance to do something for God. Here's your chance right now. If you made a decision tonight that you're going to change your life, if you made, it's, it's time that you have guts enough to stand up for God in your schools and where you're at and in front of your friends and say, praise God, I'm a Christian. Amen.